This year's Girls in Science event is virtual, and CBS4 is, of course, a very proud host with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And joining us now is Lauren Whitney, and she's here to talk about her event and the clubhouse and everything Girls in Science related. We're so excited to talk with you. I am so excited, too. I can't believe it's finally here, and we're ready for the 2021 All Virtual Girls in Science. You know, this year it's a little different, of course. You know, we had the pandemic, and we're starting off 2021, and it's a little bit different in that everything is virtual. How does this affect our Girls in Science event this year for our virtual clubhouses things obviously will be very different usually we see you and we have all of these people coming in to the Museum of Nature and Science and it's a really fun day now it's going to be a really fun month we're going to have presentations all month long twice a week the full schedule is on the Museum of Nature and Science website so you can actually go there and sign up and you get one zoom link that will stick with you the entire month so yeah. you can log in and get into all of the uh, presentations that the mentors will be giving I'll be giving one this Saturday at 10 a.m. So that will be the kickoff of Girls and Science. So we're really excited. There were some activity kits that people were able to pick up. So if you were one of the folks that got to get one of those, um, we are excited about that because there will be a whole video side where you can watch and learn a little bit more and do your virtual activity. That's so exciting. So tell us a little bit more about your activity. In the past, we've seen you have Lauren's Clubhouse. And this year, <laughs> again, the Clubhouse is virtual. So what does that look like? So this year, the Clubhouses are actually, I mean, I have learned a lot about uh, <laughs> you know online education the museum knows so much about this this is what they do so we actually created a bitmoji classroom so one side of the classroom will actually be our newsroom so you'll get to kind of click and learn different things that are in the newsroom from the green screen even just down to the cameras and the lights and the microphones we will kind of walk you through what a newsroom looks like and the other part of it is the theme of my uh, clubhouse this year our virtual clubhouse <laughs> which is Lauren Whitney's precipitation party so you'll learn about snow and rain and sleet and and freezing rain and then different weather instruments in um, the virtual clubhouse. So we wanted to make it fun, wanted to still make it a party, right? even though it's virtual. You know, and I love that there's one Zoom link that everybody can tap into for all these presentations. That makes it really easy. This is, again, where the museum is so dialed in. They've got this down, <laughs> so they know that you will lose 10,000 emails. So you will get one email <laughs> with one link and then the full schedule of events. So it's easy to follow along. You can put it on your Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, right and you'll be good to go. You don't have to worry about the inbox clutter, exactly. at least with this event. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us a little bit about what you'll be talking about this weekend. So this weekend, um, I, I kick off the event, and so you'll be learning and hearing from different mentors uh, throughout the entire uh, month. So we're going to be talking not just about weather and what it's like to be a meteorologist, but we're going to be talking about what you know all these different scientists are like as a real person wow. so we're, there's so much more to people than just their job so what do we do behind the scenes what are we like at home and what was our education like how did we get here because everyone's path is very different and some people sort of stumble into their jobs and it's not necessarily the direct route that maybe is what you would think so on paper right. so it's gonna be really interesting to hear from all these different people you know speaking of stories I think you actually have a really interesting one I know that you started off in this career but you were interested in sports mm -hmm. and you even have a news background. How did that parlay into science and being able to forecast and being a meteorologist? So when I started off in journalism school, I did want to go into sports. I wanted to be like Aaron Andrews on ESPN <laughs> running around the sidelines and uh, getting to do all of that. So I focused on sports in my journalism school and then I got my first job in Grand Junction, Colorado, and they were like, you, have, you can be the anchor, but you also have to do the weather. And I thought, you know, fake it till you make it. So I did, and I learned so much along the way, and thankfully I had a good mentor there who helped me out quite a bit. And then when I got the job here, I went back to school, and that's when I really learned so much. And Colorado is obviously a very difficult place to forecast, so it was kind of a little bit trial by fire as well mm -hmm. in my early days, just learning so much kind of on the job, which a lot of folks do. You learn on the job, and then I went back to school to refine those skills. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting, and I've, you know, I'm friends with Lauren, so I've seen her kind of go through this transition of going into school, getting that second mm -hmm. degree, and it's been really fun to watch. And I think what's so cool about this event is that you're actually encouraging girls to enter STEAM careers. You know, things that might be a little bit scary or intimidating, you're saying, I can do it, that means you can do it. Exactly. There And there's so many paths to get there. You might be thinking, oh, well, I just don't, I hate algebra, or I don't right. love chemistry. You might not ever use chemistry, so you don't even have to worry about that, but we can, you know, kind of help you f maybe find different things that you may like, or say, oh, you work at this place, but there's also this job. Well, right. I think about that, and but I don't have to do some of these things to get there. So just because you don't like one subject doesn't mean that you can't go into a STEAM career. Now, let me ask you this. What is your favorite thing about being a meteorologist? So I 
what, one of the major things I love about being a meteorologist is it's sort of like a game every day. We do Order the same thing guys. every day. We forecast every day. We're working on different weather things every day, mm -hmm. but it's all different. So it's like a puzzle piece every day. We're trying to put the puzzle together to come up with our forecast. So it's fun and interesting and it keeps you on your toes. And we're seeing a little video of you in <laughs> action. <laughs> I have to say, it's not easy, just as you pointed out in Colorado, because you're dealing with snow, you're dealing with tornadoes on the eastern plains, you're mm. dealing with all sorts of weather issues. Is there any part of you that thinks, oh my gosh, this is stressful? Or what would be your advice to people who maybe want to go into this? So there is obviously stressful, especially being on TV, because people will criticize you, oh, or yeah. if you get a forecast wrong, then they th you know, write to mean emails. But there are also people who are really, really nice. So it's not that way all the time. Right. But uh, one of my favorite <laughs> things is you know, interacting with people, and you get to learn so much. I mean, every day in the weather world, you are learning something new, because you try to remember the, you know, did this happen the last time this kind of setup happened? What did we get out of this? And you can kind of look back and you know start to recognize some patterns and look at that stuff as well so there are different things about your job you don't just do the same thing every right. uh, day and if you are looking into going into a steam career I would say try lots of different things out join different clubs at school and read some books and maybe watch some yeah. YouTube things about different careers to see you know there are there's so many different components to a job for being on TV it's th that's actually the most minor part of my job mm -hmm. is being on TV isn't that so funny yes. people don't associate that mm -hmm. with your job because you are on TV <laughs> exactly. and with all due respect to your coworkers you are the only woman in the weather department here at CBS4 what would be your advice to other maybe women or young girls perhaps trying to break that glass ceiling in their own industry I think finding friends who are similar to you that are your girlfriends. So if you can find a good little girl tribe that is going to support you along the way, whether it's at your job or it's in your school clubs or an internship, find like-minded people and talk about it and learn about it and say, hey, did you see this really cool thing? Let me show you this. And talk not just about science, but other things as well. And really find that core group of people who are, will be your friends then forever. And you will, even if you live in all different places, you will be able to find that girl group again and lean on each other as you go forward in your career. There's something to be said about having that community and having people support you mm -hmm. and you supporting others. Exactly. And that's what Girls in Science really is all about. So anything else that you would like for people to know about Girls in Science this year? We've been doing it several years now, right? This is our seventh year, so we are dialed in, but this is our first all virtual. So if you're <laughs> thinking, where do I show up? What do I do? There's nowhere to go this year but your own living room. So make sure that you are signing up at the Museum of Nature and Science on their website. They have all the details. I won't bore you with all of them here because you'll click on it and have all the answers. But once you click in and dial into that Zoom, it's, again, the same Zoom link for the entire process. And there will be lots of great speakers along the way. I have to tell you, it sounds kind of enticing to be able to Zoom wearing your slippers. Maybe mm -hmm. you have your dog next to you. You're just kind of relaxing in your own house. This can be actually really fun. Exactly. And then the great part part about this is, you know, it, travel is inhibitive for people. So I know we've had people come from Telluride, from Craig and Grand Junction and Greeley all over the state. But that is really hard. What if your family already has plans? So this means that you can join in from everywhere. And hopefully we actually get some people from other yeah. states. I have family in Minnesota, Arizona. I'm going to send them to them all. Yeah, absolutely. This presents a whole new slew of opportunities for people having it virtual. Exactly. All right, Lauren, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. For more information on the Girls in Science virtual event, remember, the first of its kind here, head to cbsdenver.com.